So I'd like to welcome you to the Hood Museum of Arts Virtual Mindfulness in the Museum. This program may be familiar to some of you who have participated in the galleries as we explore what it means to be mindful. Today, we hope we can bring a sense of calm and wonder to wherever you are by reflecting on a singular work from the collection. Here we have Here we have Francois Genoux's New Hampshire landscape. Genoux studied in Lyon, France and lived and worked in America from 1849 to 1870. Like the Hudson River School painters already established here, he traveled deep into the wilderness of the Adirondacks and the White Mountains in search of subjects. It is believed that this landscape is a romanticized composite view inspired by Genoux's visits to the presidential range in New Hampshire's White Mountains, liberally embellished for impact. The sweeping vista, deep recession into space, and mastery of atmospheric effects reveal Genoux's admiration for his more influential contemporaries, Frederick Edwin Church and Albert Beardstadt. You might find it interesting to have a, a better understanding of the sense of scale of this painting if you have not seen it in person before. Um, it does measure more than 47 inches by 83 inches. And if you spend enough time in the gallery with this work, you will observe that it is comprised of thousands of short, thin brush strokes. Before we begin, I would like to suggest that if your device allows, please click on the view option tab that appears next to the green bar on your screen that says Sharon is sharing her screen. Select side by side under view options and you should have a slim vertical bar between the image of the painting and the speaker profiles. You can slide the bar all the way to the right, which will minimize the speaker profiles and enlarge the painting. In addition, you may zoom in on the painting at any time using the view options tab if your device allows by adjusting the zoom ratio. If you're joining us from an iPad, you can control the zoom by pinching and releasing two fingers on the screen. This program is being recorded and will be available for you to revisit whenever you need a moment to refocus or if you'd like to share. And now I would like to welcome Adam Knowlton Young and Kathy Moore from the Dartmouth Mindfulness Practice Group to lead us through today's mindfulness. Welcome, Adam and Kathy. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Sharon. Um, so my name is Adam, and I do want to introduce my co-facilitator for today, Kathy Moore. Kathy, if you just want to chime in, I know you'll be coming in towards the end, but if you just want to introduce yourself very briefly. Yeah, um, I'm a co-facilitator of the, of the mindfulness group and uh, happy to be here and welcome everyone. Thank you. And I also just want to recognize all of you in the audience. Thank you so much for taking some time to be with us, to sit with this painting, um, and taking congratulate yourself for taking a break to be calm for half an hour and breathe. So the Mindfulness Practice Group, where Kathy and I sit, is a peer-facilitated group that meets once a week on Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m. to meditate and talk about a shared reading and generally support each other in our mindfulness practices. And we're definitely grateful to be here and honor this amazing painting by Francois Genou and the new, his New Hampshire landscape. The guiding question for today is when we say that art makes us feel a certain way, what do we mean? Today we're going to invite you to explore some different ways of feeling through your thoughts, through your emotions, through your body. Of course, if that leads you to other ways of feeling, that is wonderful too. The program will be in two parts generally. The first part will be a mindfulness exercise with the art, and then we'll return together and Kathy will facilitate um, a virtual conversation to talk about what happened. That will involve you putting your thoughts into the chat and we'll be able to read them out. Just so we're on the same page, we're defining mindfulness via John Kabat-Zinn's definition, the act of paying attention on purpose in the present moment and without judgment. There's many possible purposes for mindfulness. 
one of which is to add richness to our everyday experience by noticing things we might not otherwise. Today, we'll practice that in terms of our interaction with art and see what happens. All of this will be done very quickly because of the amount of time we have. If you've never practiced mindfulness before, we hope that this will be a good introduction. If you've practiced mindfulness before, we hope that this will be a nice opportunity to deepen or expand your practice. At the end of the mindfulness session, you're invited to enter your thoughts in the chat box, and we can read out some of those thoughts during the sharing portion of the program. We'll begin in just a minute, and when we come back together for sharing, after you hear a tone, actually uh, this morning, normally when we do this, we have um, a bowl or a tone, but in this case, um, I'll just notify you when we start, and I will gently let you know when we're going to quit or when we're going to stop the mindfulness section. And just know that all the mindfulness guidance that I offer is totally optional. If you wanna just hang out with the painting and take in the beautiful artwork that's before you without the mindfulness, that is absolutely fine. Um, taking in artwork is always a part of mindfulness anyway. So let us begin. First, I invite you to actually close your eyes briefly, just to help us settle in and to be present with the painting when we do spend time with it. But for now, just close your eyes briefly and settle into your chair or your cushion or wherever you are. Find a comfortable and relaxed position but one where you can be upright and alert as well. So your head is very gently curious to the sky. So there's a gentle elongation in your spine. And I invite you to take a moment to notice your breath. Rolling in and out chest and belly, rising and falling. And just notice how it is right now. And know that however it is, it's totally fine. It doesn't need to be any specific way. Just notice how it is in this moment. And now I invite you to notice your body. Just check in briefly. You might notice the contact of your body with your seat. Maybe your feet on the floor, giving you that sense of solidity and support. If you notice any tension in your body, I invite you to relax, whether it's in your shoulders or your face or wherever it might be. Just take this opportunity to relax if you can. And now I invite you, when you're ready, to open your eyes and direct your attention to the painting. As you take in the scene, what thoughts or emotions, if any, are present for you? What sensations from your body 
do you notice as you take in this scene? What details of the painting do you find yourself noticing? As the view zooms in on the upper left of the painting, I invite you to notice what your lived experience is viewing the painting in this moment. What comes up for you? As you take in the details of the painting, what feeling or impression do you notice arising in you? As the view zooms in on the upper right of the painting, I invite you to notice what physical sensations, thoughts, or emotions rise as you're taking in different parts of this painting.
zooming in on the lower right of the painting. Similarly, what do you notice arising for you? What details are you taking in? And circling back to the full view of Genou's New Hampshire landscape, what if anything is different now from when you first took in this view? What do you notice in your mind, in your body, or in the painting? And now, as you're ready, I'd like you, I'd like to invite you back. You're obviously welcome to keep viewing the painting as it's on your screen, but we now want to make time for folks to share their experience in this meditation with Francois Genou's New Hampshire landscape. And I will turn it over to Kathy help facilitate that. At this point, we would like to um, have anyone who is, would like to share any aspect of experiencing this meditation, the meditation itself, or any thoughts or insights or feelings, impressions that arose as you focused attention on different views of Francois Gino's painting, New Hampshire, White Mountain Landscape. 
In order to share, please type your thoughts, experience, sensations into chat. And I will read these aloud to the group. We will not be able to have back and forth discussion in this Zoom format and within this time constraint. But you are welcome to type any connections you feel or resonant, resonance you have with the experience expressed by others. Although we're pretty close to our scheduled end of time, which is one o'clock, um, I would like people to feel welcome to, to stay longer because the discussion may go longer, I'm hoping. Um, and share their experiences. In about eight or 10 minutes, I will um, let, let us sort of close the presentation. Uh, Sharon will have a few words. Um, but I would really like to have people share anything, anything that, that they felt or thought or saw during this meditation time. So we have uh, one response. Um, looking at the up, um, looking at the upper right section, made my chest open, and I could breathe easier. I felt freer. Another impression, different parts of the painting reminded me of various parts of my life. The top left, the difficult times where I emerged to be successful, each high, and the top right being far distant, uncertain future. And the bottom, maybe a time, the dark times of life. Another, taking in the landscape while meditating was profoundly relaxing. Another response, it brought back visceral memories of being alone in the mountains feeling mist on my skin, some of my favorite times. Another response, I found myself being drawn to the distant purple mountains beyond the ones in the forefront. Like I wanted to melt into that purple lavender tone of the painting. Another, after viewing segments of the painting during the meditation, I realized I was over-focused on the sky and after saw more of the trees can apply that to over focus on an emotion or task when the whole picture is needed. Another, having spent so many months now close to home, it was nice to sit with something so open and vast. It felt very freeing. Another 
When we first saw the painting, I was most attracted to the distance, calm and wistful. The foreground with the fallen logs made me anxious and want to clean it up. After we looked at parts of the painting close up and then went back to the whole, I felt more integrated and peaceful. Another. My mind was thinking of the backstory of the house in the upper left. There were stone blocks in the lower left, bridge house long gone. Thank you for offering meditation with art. Thank you. Another. The experience was liberating and I felt so free from the current headlines and the stress surrounding them. I was particularly drawn to the background, the sense of infinity. Closer in, I was focused on details, darker, a sense of disarray with the fallen logs. My gaze kept being drawn back to infinity. Another, this kind of a list as my brain does not, this is kind of a list as my brain does not turn off well. First, I was curious and trying to suck in all the details. The two pines are like antlers, the tiny white house shed. What a great place to live, sun on the high left field. My brain then played Halls of the Mountain King. The upper right made me want to hang glide. The eagle bird flying in the lower right center, those deep wood would be a great place for a photo shoot for a metal band. At the end, pulling back, there seems to be a lot more sunshine and felt much more rested and relaxed. Another, a shift from seeing space to directly feeling the space, then becoming space in the sense of quieting, calming, opening. Another, I love the magnificent space and beauty of being in the clouds above tree line. I was floating in the clouds and following the shadows down to the valley. I felt a sense of peace and steadfastness of these mountains. I loved the glimpse of people and the hut and the early exploration of the mountains in the 1800s. Another, as an individual with an avid interest to study painting techniques and subject matter, I studied the painting of the clouds and saw the color reflected in the background. I also noticed we are just above the tree line and that human life is civilizing left foreground. So my mind remained very busy, but the atmosphere in the background felt compelling to me. Another, the trees growing at angles indicate challenging harsh climate. Another, askew and aloft, warm colors and cool, diagonal mountains and horizontal clouds. As my breath went in, and out. Another, decorative in its flatness of color and soft tones, but threatening. Fall in the mountains, dark valleys, dangerous elevations, a tree hanging precariously over a great height, tension between flatness and depth, very small, even minuscule humanity exploring this dangerous and magnificent beauty. 
easy to identify the very time of year in the timelessness. Lots of air, lots of space radiating from the painting's flatness. No black, all color, but the, dim the dimmest tones as neutral as could be found in the painter's palette. Silent, the clouds offering a sense of movement. Another, as an individual with an avid interest to study painting techniques and subject matter, I studied the painting of the clouds. I think, I'm sorry, I think I read this. Yes. Okay, so I think I, we've come to the end of messages so far. Um, I'd like to turn this back to share and read. Um, I really appreciate people's varied experiences. It's always very informative to me in these mindfulness uh, sessions with, with paintings or, or sculpture or art at the museum. Um, just how varied people's experiences are when they are spending time with the art. So I would like to turn this back to Sharon. Um, I think she has still some things to say from the hood, um, and, but Adam and I will, can stay a little while longer if people still continue to like to share. I noticed many said thank you and um, had to leave. So Sharon? Yes, thank you. A really warm thank you to both of you, Kathy and Adam, and to everyone who joined us today. Um, that does conclude our mindfulness for today, but as Kathy mentioned, please stay on with us if you'd like to share further. Um, for those who need to leave now, again, we thank you. We hope you will take a moment to complete the survey that will be sent out tomorrow to help us shape future virtual mindfulness programs for the museum. And I would like to take the opportunity to wish you all a peaceful afternoon. Thank you. And I also wanted to thank everyone. As the person who was going to do the facilitation this time, I had my doubts how relaxing an experience it would be for me. It turns out it was quite relaxing. And I've got to say all your comments and your insights and listening to Kathy read them was very soothing. So thank you all for helping make it quite meditative for me as well. Someone is asking about a recording, and yes, it, it, it has been recorded. Um, we will be posting it on the Hood Museum of Art YouTube channel in the near future, um, I would say within a couple of weeks. Um, but you can always check back on the Hood's website um, under news and stories and events, um, and we will um, make a note of when that, when that goes up and is available. I mean, it looks like um, there are there aren't any other messages coming in. Um, I think a number of people had to leave, but, yes. uh, but I would like to thank everyone as well um, for sharing with us this time and also your experiences and reflections. As Adam said, it it really enhanced and deepened looking at the painting. To, to see so many different uh, responses. So I think I'd like to thank everybody who participated. With that, I don't know, Sharon, if- Yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll wrap up and we'll let everybody go. And thank you again. I, um, 
echo um, Adam and Kathy's comments. The sharing was really wonderful and uplifting experience for me personally as well. Um, and I hope it was for all of you and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.